could Missouri actually be left out in the cold when it comes to a New Year's Six Bowl this season? I think that's pretty unlikely, but I got to say it's possible. So let's break down the scenarios coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And as a quick reminder, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first ticket purchase. And over at on3sports.com, Old Andy Staples, a very prominent college football writer, made a a real big stir yesterday, posted on, well, actually had an entire article, his, his comments about who he thought was going to make the college football playoff and the New Year's Six, the rest of the New Year's Six bowl games as well. And Missouri was not included in this graphic. And well, a lot of Missouri fans didn't actually read what Andy wrote. So they did miss a few details here. But I got to say, I do agree with all the Missouri fans that were pretty shocked by this prediction, because I got to say, I don't see this scenario playing out whatsoever. Now let's start off with a couple things here. The only way this happens is if well, number one, Missouri's going to have to have some some current spots that seem available taken away by, say, an upset. For example, if Iowa were to beat Michigan in the Big Ten Championship this weekend, well, there goes a spot because otherwise Iowa is not getting a spot. But if Iowa wins the Big Ten, hey, guess what? They're going to get one of those six New Year's Bowl spots And Michigan is still going to get one of them as well. They'll probably almost certainly be in the college football playoff still, even without being the Big Ten champ, still having just that one loss. So that actually would take a spot away for Missouri. On the other hand, in the Big 12, I've seen this one bandied about as well. Let's say Oklahoma State were to upset Texas. Well, I actually think that the Horns, the Longhorns in that case, would actually slide below Missouri. I think there's a very good chance that happens because after losing to a two-touchdown underdog in that game, I don't really know. Well, I'm sure you can make an argument for Texas. Don't get me wrong. So you still want to root for Texas to beat Oklahoma State. You want Michigan certainly to beat Iowa. There's no question about that if you're a Missouri fan. But I do believe that even if the Cowboys were to beat Texas, let's say they beat them relatively comfortably, I think then in that case it would seem like the Longhorns would actually slow slide below Missouri, who has consistently been the highest-ranked two-loss team by the college football playoff committee here for a few weeks. So that's the biggest things to worry about there. Now, there is another scenario Another thing that people didn't notice, Andy Staples' graphic here, they saw Florida State in the college football playoff and also Louisville in the Orange Bowl playing Ohio State. A very important thing to note here. Staples was not arguing that Louisville is a better team than Missouri. Simply put, what's happened here is because, well, basically – Because the Sugar Bowl, the Rose Bowl are part of the college football playoff this year, the traditional Pac-12 Big Ten tie-ins, for instance, in the Rose Bowl, well, they don't apply this season. But the traditional tie-ins do apply. The ACC tie-in at least applies to the Orange Bowl, which is, again, not part of the college football playoff. So in other words, Louisville and Florida State are playing this weekend for the ACC championship. If undefeated Florida State were to lose to Louisville, well, there's still an excellent chance that Florida State makes the college football playoff, and even with one loss, they'll almost certainly be in one of those New Year's Six bowl games. Kind of the same thing with Louisville, because here's the deal. It's not just the ACC champion. If you're the highest-ranked team 
left from the ACC. In other words, if Florida State is the ACC champion, they beat Louisville, they will be undefeated and in the college football playoff without question. But as the highest ranked remaining ACC team, that means that Louisville would still get in to that Orange Bowl spot. So yes, that would potentially take away a spot from Missouri, but at this point, that almost seems like a certainty. It seems like there are going to be two ACC teams because the only way is if Florida State won in basically the ugliest, most unimpressive fashion possible, then that would knock them out of the college football playoff potentially. I just don't see any scenario where that actually happens. So realistically, I think Florida State and Louisville are going to be in that that scenario one way or the other. So bottom line is, I think what I've just laid out for you is there's going to be spots available for Missouri unless, as Andy Staples has put in his article here, unless the college football playoff committee decides to reevaluate Missouri's resume, essentially, and move Oklahoma and or Ole Miss, likely both of those teams, likely Oklahoma and and Ole Miss ahead of Missouri. Now, we can get into a big argument, as many fans have on social media the past couple days, about whether Ole Miss is better than Missouri or vice versa, and whether Oklahoma is better than Missouri and vice versa. But ultimately, I just don't think any of that stuff matters. I just don't see the likelihood of the playoff committee reevaluating Missouri after Missouri just put an absolute beat down on Arkansas in Fayetteville this past week. What what from this past weekend on a weekend where none of those teams, Missouri, Ole Miss, or Oklahoma, have a game coming up this weekend. They aren't none of those teams are in a conference title game. So what can possibly change the playoff committee's mind that dramatically? when nothing has really changed. I I just don't see that scenario as being likely. That is the thing I would argue with the most with Andy Staples there is why do you think that the the playoff committee is going to reevaluate Ole Miss and Oklahoma as being better than Missouri? That just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Now, what does make sense, again, as I I broke down there for you, it seems like 90% or greater that Louisville and Florida State are both going to be in the New Year's Six. One of them, Florida State, probably going to be in the college football playoff one way or the other, it would seem. And also, again, just to note, Tulane is almost certain to make it as well because as the highest ranked group of five team, or if you will, the team outside of the power five, well, they're going to get a spot. The highest ranked group of five team gets a spot. So I think there's a little bit of confusion out there among Missouri fans as well. It's not as though anybody's arguing that two lanes should be ranked ahead of Missouri. But again, the automatic spots are what they are. And right now, Missouri is a potential at-large. So when you're an at-large, there's going to be some nervous moments, I suppose. But as I've said earlier, Missouri has consistently been the top-ranked two-loss team for a while now, and I just don't see that changing. So again, if that's a too long, didn't listen for you, let me wrap it up once again. Missouri fans should definitely be rooting for Michigan to beat Iowa in the Big Ten Championship because if the Hawkeyes win, there goes a spot for sure that just disappears that all the at-larges were basically counting on. We also should be rooting for the Longhorns to beat the Oklahoma State Cowboys, though if Oklahoma State wins, I do think there's a decent shot that Missouri moves ahead of Texas, so that's less of a concern. And then finally, on the lowest level of concerns, Florida State and Louisville, it's just hard for me to see a scenario where the Seminoles get defeated and fall completely out of the New Year's Six. That just doesn't seem like that's really possible. A one-loss Florida State team falling behind Missouri, for instance, I just don't see that happening. So really, the ACC championship game, not a huge concern if you're a Missouri fan. And you know what? If this were 2024 instead of 2023, Well, then the college football playoff would be a huge concern for Missouri. Of course, the playoff expanding to 12 teams next year. But I got to say, this whole debate between Missouri and Ole Miss fans, for instance, has just reminded me that really the whole 12-team playoff 
is, in my opinion, much more of a problem than it is a solution. So I want to explain that coming up. But you know what? I have a solution for you if you're looking for last-minute tickets, and it is game time because game time, they're clearly the kings of last-minute ticket deals. For instance, hey, it's hockey time. I'm ready for some hockey. I don't know about you. So how about Thursday night? You want to see the Blues take on the Buffalo Sabres? To me, $23 mezzanine level, the center ice. Again, that's tough to beat. And over at game time, they show you the perfect vantage point. You can just scroll through the various different seats, and they show you a preview for each and every seat. As you scroll through, what an absolutely fabulous visual experience they've created over at Game Time. So you know what? Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K. E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thanks for making a Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. And for your second listen, you might want to check out Locked On Ole Miss, believe it or not, because again, Missouri and Ole Miss, quite a debate happening right now about who deserves that spot in the new year six. I really think it's going to go to Missouri over Ole Miss. Again, unless the committee truly decides to reevaluate both teams' resumes, I just don't see that as very likely. But you know what? We'll see what happens there. But you know, I, I will say I was having a discussion with some friends, some huge college football in Missouri friends. One of them said, you know what, this past Saturday in particular was just an unbelievable college football Saturday, was it not? And he said, you know what, as great as the NFL is, you never have a regular season week like that. And I had to agree with him. I think that's very true, and it's what makes college football magical when it's at its absolute peak. But... Having said that, to steal a Larry David-ism, you also never have subjective debates in the NFL that end up actually settling things that matter on the field. And to me, I, I didn't sign up for figure skating. Nothing against figure skating, but that's never been my bag. Football has always been my bag, and football should be won and lost on the field. So, Here's where I am on the on the 12 team playoff that's coming for instance because if this were again if we had the 12 team football playoff this season well my goodness now we'd really have a rageful kind of debate between Missouri and Ole Miss fans and and honestly the way I've seen this stuff play out online I'm already a little bit sick of it to the point where you know what the heck with this new year 6 bowl game you got everybody says that the bowl games outside of the playoff don't matter anyway. You know what? What the, the let's really go all the way with it. Let's just play Ole Miss then. How about that? Hey, Ole Miss, we'll, we'll meet you guys in Dallas or, or Houston or what wherever the Superdome. I don't know whatever whatever sort of indoor neutral site that's about equidistant between Ole Miss and Missouri that you guys would like. Honestly, I I don't really care. And because, honestly, if Missouri ends up playing Tulane, for instance, as the group of five team, honestly, I'd just rather would play Ole Miss, to be really honest. And, again, I know this isn't going to happen. I'm actually making a point here because Missouri and Ole Miss, well, first of all, they're going to go, well, we can't have two SEC teams playing a bowl game. Why not? We didn't play this season. We're barely even in a real conference together anyway, considering how often Ole Miss and Missouri play in football. It seems like we've played Texas about as many times over the past decade or so as we have the Rebels. So, I don't know. Let's have another SEC game. That's all anybody ever wants anyway these days. I guarantee you Disney Plus would be happy if we streamed it on that thing. But the point I'm trying to make here is, again, we can argue endlessly about this stuff and I, you can from every angle in the world but if you really look at it my friends over at FanDuel Sportsbook for instance if this Missouri Ole Miss game really happened on a neutral field in Dallas for example 
I don't even know who I would favor in that game. Maybe Missouri by a couple of points or something. I mean, you're, you're talking a true coin flip type game there on paper. Sure, if you're a Missouri fan, you're sitting here and arguing, hey, actually Missouri has played better down the stretch than Ole Miss. Fine. Again, I, I would agree with you to a certain extent. I'm just saying no matter what side of that debate you're on, you can't really be as – as just absolutely sure and and just dug in on your positions as a lot of fans are trying to be right now. Listen, I get it. I, I get it. Everybody's going to argue for their for their sides, and maybe I will get old Stephen Willis from Locked On Ole Miss here this week, and we'll have the debate out, and that'll be a good time. But frankly, I just want to see it all decided on the field. And the point of expanding the college football playoff to 12 teams in a lot of people's opinion was, hey, well, then nobody's left out and everybody will, you know, the arguments will be over. Oh, no, sir. Au contraire. This is all this is doing is just opening up a whole new set of arguments and frankly, more teams to feel like they're left out in the cold become the college football playoff. So in my opinion, while I am very sad about the Pac-12 dying as much as I hate that, the upside of that is, hey, guess what? We have four major power conferences now. Starting next year, it's no longer the Power Five, is it? No, it's the Power Four. And of course, in the year where we actually have a nice round number of four power fo football teams, now's the year we're going to expand to 12 teams. You see where I'm going with this, right? How about we just have four conference champions play off in a four-team playoff, and then we're just done with it. Then the debates are decided. You either won your conference or you didn't. No more of this crying about who's best, whose two losses were better than the other team's two losses. Frankly, I just find all of those, those, those arguments to be exhausting and not particularly interesting. You know what's interesting? Seeing who wins and loses on the football field. That's what I want to see. So you know what? The heck with the bowl system. Bring on Ole Miss. And certainly to heck, in all seriousness, to heck with this 12-team playoff. Let's just crown a champion from each conference and move on with our lives. And you know what? For those of you in the, who are SEC fans and Big Ten fans saying, well, you know what? Damn it. We, it's not fair. The Big 12 isn't as good as the SEC. You're right. It's not. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't have rated all their best teams then. That's the consequence. Is that great for, is for Missouri fans? Does that make it harder for them to make the playoff? I suppose it does. But at the same time, if Missouri actually wins the SEC one day, by God, there's going to be no arguments and we'll know we're true champions and worthy of being in the playoff. I'm just tired of all this figure skating nonsense, all this, all this judging instead of deciding things on the field. I thought the expanding the playoff was supposed to stop all this. It sure seems like to me it's going to be quite the opposite come 2024. And coming up with so many games happening here over the last couple of weeks, basketball and football, of course, Thanksgiving happening. Well, there's been a few things I've missed here on this program, including some interesting details about the North end zone development over at Furrow Field coming next season. So let's talk about that coming up. But first, I want to tell you about a FanDuel Sportsbook. As the weather gets colder, well, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, well, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over under totals and more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and continue the NFL season hot, hot, hot. It's FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Well, the much discussed North End Zone project over at Memorial Stadium now has an official name, making it a little more real, I suppose. The Memorial Stadium Project, Missouri announced a few days ago, maybe even more than a week ago at this point, 
that the Board of Curators passed a resolution to begin this project, including the redevelopment of the North End Zone, con end zone Concourse. Big part of this, that not a lot of details so far, but the most detail we got was there's going to be a new North End Zone video board and an improved sound system planned for the 2024 season. In particular, I think the sound system improvements, I, I think... Honestly, I think people are going to really notice that. Maybe a lot of people haven't necessarily noticed it. The people who have noticed it, though, are, I think are going to be really happy with an upgrade there because at, at times, truly, the sound could be a little grating. And honestly, that type of stuff can absolutely affect your, your game day experience without question. I'm not even talking about the actual music that is being played or the actual sound that's being played. I'm talking about mixing here and just the levels, you know, that kind of thing, making it a more ple pleasurable audio experience actually does go a long way. There's a reason that the CIA, for instance, will use, you know, will keep people up with loud rock music and that kind of thing for sleep deprivation and, and torture, that kind of deal. So in other words, I know that sounds incredibly dramatic, of course. We're talking about football here, right? But the point is, every little detail matters, and I think Desiree Reed francois in particular understands this. So I'm very pleased to note that Missouri seems to have noticed the need to improve that sound experience as well. And obviously, well, the North video board, that needed a little bit of an upgrade too. It's kind of looking uh, looking its age after, obviously, the glittering new board that was put in the south end zone in 2019. And as somebody who sits in the south end zone and has to crane his neck backwards to see that thing, it will be nice to see a nice big video board over there. But as for what else happens in the north end zone going to be interesting to see if there's businesses restaurants hotels shops any of that kind of stuff or maybe are we just talking new suites i think suites is the obvious one because from everything i understand there's still basically a waiting list and and plenty of demand for those high end suites at Faro Field. So that's an obvious move that I think is coming, though not specifically announced here in this press release for the Memorial Stadium project. So that'll do it for this edition of Locked on Mizzou. Thanks for making this show your first listen every day. And thanks for telling a friend that we are free and available wherever you get podcasts, including on YouTube. And you can find all the pertinent links just by going to Locked on Mizzou. Dot com. So until next time, I am John Miller. And you know what? Let's talk some basketball much more tomorrow right here on Locked on Mizzou.